Hey guys, I'm Dina. This is Creative Minds Homeschool. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to share with you why we did not use the Good and the Beautiful for language arts this year, what we used instead, and what we're going to do next year moving forward. Okay, so this is what this video is all about, and let's get started. So I'm going to back up and tell you about last year, which kind of led us into what happened this year. Last year, we started the year with Good and the Beautiful, the old level four. And in October, when the new level four came out, I just absolutely loved it. I loved that the graphics were even better than they had been. I loved the layout, just the way it was all, it just even flowed better than the old level did. So I ended up ordering that new level for my kids, even though we already had the old level. I hated to do that because I'm very frugal. But I just, I just knew it was going to be kind of a game changer for us. Um, so that's what I did. So that lasted us up until the beginning of this year. We had a few weeks. We were wrapping up that, that level because we started late. So then I was faced with a dilemma because it was the same thing I had last year. Only level five. We had the old level five was available. The new level five was not going to be out until, come to find out, not till like, just now. So it is just released, but that was going to be way too long for us to be waiting. So in the meantime, I was like, oh, I have got to do something. And I, you know how it is. We homeschool mamas love to research. And I researched and researched and just every curriculum I looked at, I was like, I know my kids. This is not going to go over. Ugh. So I do have history lovers in my bunch. So I told them, I found these um, this is the McGuffey Eclectic Readers. This is what we've been using. Um, so for my son, he's doing the third reader. My girls have been doing the second reader. This is basically what kids used in America at the turn of the century for language arts and school. So it, um, being that I have history lovers, I knew I, that they would probably enjoy just that whole idea that this used to be what everybody used. Um, I loved that it is full of God, godliness, godly character, being a decent human being. Um, it also has some readings about nature and um, history. So it was just kind of a very rich, for being that it's just a simple looking book, it's really, it has some riches in here that I was just impressed with. So we decided that this, this was what we were going to do. And I'm gonna show you how we've been using it. And um, all right, so I'll just give you, I'll jump right in. This is Everett's third reader. So each day they read the story. This is an example, The Way to Be Happy, Child at Home. Um, so it has the story that he reads. And then at the end, it has questions. And then it has, um, it teaches them a little bit about if they were going to stand up and read this aloud, how they would pronounce things. And then it has a list of spell and define. So I got him a dictionary and I will underline the words I want him to write in his journal that I made for him. And so he defines them and then at the bottom he writes a sentence with each of the words. So um, I will show you his, oh, I don't, do I have your notebook up here, Everett? Yep. Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. Oh. Um, so what we do on the first day, they kind of alternate between a couple of things. So the first day he will do a copy work paragraph. Usually I write the number in here. This one he just picked on his own, so I didn't get the number down there. But he does a copy work paragraph. Then he has, um, down here he can write doodles that go with the copy work. Then on the back here are his um, definitions that he looked up and defined. These are his sentences, and then he has another little doodle he can do down here. The next day, um, he has another copywork paragraph, more doodles, um, and then he narrates what happened in the story. So, this has been a good just experience for them to get used to writing, narrate, doing narration. Um, writing, I've told y'all before, is not our strong suit. So with that in mind, I was like, well, this is a good opportunity. It's copy work, it's narration. Pretty soon I want to get into where I'm having them 
I'm going to dictate to them and they write some of the stuff down on their own, which gives them a good chance to use their own spelling, capitalization, um, punctuation, all the things they need to have um, to be independent writers. So that is what his looks like. The girls is a little bit different. So with theirs, um, I'll just pick a random lesson. This was about the globe. So they read the story. Theirs has questions as well, which honestly, we have not done much with the questions. At the end, at the end it has a list of a bunch of words, which they write these down. So I'll show you. Oh, this happens to be the story I was just pointing to. That's, oh, this is your old notebook, Elon. Well, okay, I'll give you, yeah. Okay, and I'll show you what I've done for the big girl, the fifth graders. They do a copywork paragraph, and like I said, eventually one of these of the two copyworks will become a dictation. And we've already tried that with them. Um, doodles. Then they copy this, the list of words, and then they make sentences with the list of words. And then um, the next day, so they have these little things up here. The first one says... Read the entire story before you start. Then this one says, did you already read the whole story? What did you think? And they get to label if it was good, just meh, or they didn't like it. And so she copied her copy work. She did more doodles. And then on the back, this is her narration. And then her narrative drawing is basically, they're drawing a picture of what they narrated. So um, that is how my girls do theirs. And... In addition to this, we're also using Essentials in Writing Level 5. Um, and this has kind of been okay for us. Um, part of the issue, I really, we wanted the writing part, but the first half of it is grammar. So recently, I decided we we're going to fast forward. We're going to skip the grammar portion, even though we were already like 24 lessons in. I was like, oh my goodness, we're never going to get to the writing. So we have recently just skipped to the back and uh, about lesson 40 something, we started getting into the writing portion, which is what we really need to work on. So it's starting to teach them about brainstorming, like the steps of writing and just um, things like you have an opening sentence, a detail, an explanation, another detail, an explanation, and a closing sentence, stuff like that. Um, so that is how we have been doing language arts this year. For better or for worse, I have really loved these and I highly recommend them. Um, maybe not necessarily as your sole curriculum, but as definitely as a reader, just for kids to realize, um, for us Christian kids to know, like this used to be the foundation of the education that kids were getting. It's all about just so many things that involve God and just um, great stories, moral lessons, and things like that. It also, I mean, it has some heavy topics like death. Um, it has different forms of writing, like poetry and um, stories, or just like history things. Um, so they're getting a, a wide variety of reading experiences, topics, and um, I just think it's, it's really good, even if you just use it for kids to read stories out of sometimes. I highly recommend these. Let's talk about next year. So the Good and the Beautiful Level 5, the new level, has just released, and I'm planning for my fifth graders, that's what they're going, I mean, they're, well, they're going to be sixth graders next year. They're going to do Level 5 for sixth grade. Um, my son, I went ahead and gave him the placement test, and he is ready for Level 7. So I'm going to go ahead and buy Level 7 for him, and he's going to get into that in preparation for, he'll be in eighth grade, so in preparation for like, kind of getting high school readiness going. Um, but basically, the reason why I decided, I kind of had a dilemma there, because I was like, man, I hate to, for my sixth graders to be in a lower level. But I just find with the good and the beautiful, it is very, um, it builds incrementally over time. And I researched a ton of other language arts curriculums, and just nothing I, I looked at felt like a good fit for us. Um, I've really, the only thing that I've really missed out on this year for my kids, being that we were using these other language arts things, was the art and the geography that were built in. It just kind of gives me a feeling of bulkiness to our learning that, um, 
you know, I'm not having to think up and address on my own because it's built into the curriculum and I really like that. That's pretty much it. We are liking our, our alternative, but feeling like for next year, we need to go back to just that more full curriculum that we had going on. I will probably have my girls and Everett use the McGuffey readers as readers this coming year because just I feel like the stories are so good. Um, it's like almost like reading a little time capsule from America's history. Um, and I just think that that's important for kids to know that we used to have a better foundation than what's going on right now, I think. Um, that's just my opinion, but that's it is what it is. So anyway, if you like this video, feel free to give it some love. And um, if you have any questions or comments or anything, feel free to hit, put them down below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Kiddo, go ahead and slither past. <laughs>